in the blue. He's for Team Liquid. Give it up. It's Clem. And up here at the top right hand side of the map, representing Psystorm Gaming, he is Max Pax. This is definitely a very hype match. And again, these two players have played a lot, especially in those EPT weeklies. In fact, if you just look at their match history, most of the matches, it's just like most of the matches they played against each other are just those EPT weeklies constantly back and forth. And most recently, Clem did in the last EPT weekly defeat Max Pax two to zero uh, in like the round of eight of the European weekly, which was basically just like five, six days ago. So that's going to be fresh in both these players' minds. But I mean, Max Pax has won a couple of series before that. They played in like Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. They played in like Pigsty Festival. So they have been playing a ton against each other. They know each other inside out. They know what the current meta is against each other. And well, we're in for uh, a treat as all, as per usual. Yeah, and the interesting thing as well is not only, right, did Max Pax lose most recently to Clem, but again, 2 0, 1 2, nothing is unexpected in this matchup. Clem is doubling Max Pax in all times head, head to head in the series. It's 54 to 29. Sorry, Legacy of the Void, but for these players, that is effectively mm -hmm. lifetime. I. I did not think he was going to be that one-sided just in terms of all-time series. But I guess Max Pax has started to peak maybe a little bit more recently than Clem has. Yeah, I, I think Clem, if you, if you remember like the beginning and middle of 2020, that was like the period where everyone just looked, start, said, Rainer is really good. And he came up in the past year or so. But what about Clem? Clem looks like he could be really, really great. And it was like season three of 2020 that Clem finally started kind of peaking and stuff. And then 2021, he was an absolute beast. That was when he was just winning every single season of the EU online, like regionals and stuff. But Max Pex, I feel like he was kind of just, he was like that name that a lot of people respected and knew was really good, but he would still sometimes be a little bit here, or a little bit there. So I, I think it totally makes sense to me that Clem won a lot of those earlier matches. But as Max Pax played and got better and better and better, I think he's definitely become a little bit more respected as being the top player for Protoss in Europe, at least. Yeah, Showtime, of course, always has a, a handle on that title. But I, yeah, I think for, in this matchup in particular, I mean, Max Pax just handled Bjorn in the Pigsty Finals. He won the OSD tournament. He's been peaking at the right time. And in this game, Theoretically, his build is peaking at the right time, too. It's a proxy starport. We're going to see a medevac come out. Hellions are going to be on the docket. Now, technically, as I said this, this is a good build for Max Pax. He opened Stargate, but the problem is here, this is moving into Oracles, and you want to have at least two Phoenix, arguably three, by the time that this Hellion drop hits. So the question now, Max Pax, he built that Oracle. Is he going to build the Phoenix behind that? Because that changes from, wow, you know, this is a great position to Max Pax, too. He actually is not going to be able to handle this well at all. Yeah, can definitely make a big difference on oh, what you have available. Ooh, Oracle finding the uh, Hellions, but did he, he saw it, but did he see it? And it looks like the answer is yes. We got a Phoenix on the way. Oracle pops in, scouts things out. The Phoenix is not going to be done quite in time for the Hellion drop, but it will be popping out sometime during the actual attack. Phoenix build pretty quickly, but not quickly enough for these pros to be saved. Yeah, this is, I mean, big, big up. Picking up one of those Hellions does mean they do not one-shot anymore. But this is one Adept trying to save this, and he's dodging the Adept shots! And 12 workers go down, and eventually this gets dealt with, but this is, this is game-ending damage. This is too much here. He's dodging the Adept shots, eventually things go down, but... Spear Dragon, 15 probes! That's not supposed to happen, Bailmo. <laughs> As it turns out, you're not supposed to lose 15 probes to the Hellion drop. Uh, Devastating situation. This is, I think, to make matters worse also, this style that Max Pax is going for and everything, going for the Phoenix opening, going for this sort of, I guess, like, unit composition that Max Pax wants, it's not really a composition that plays well from behind with. You don't have, like, super... Your opponent also is going to have to, like, have some openings for you to exploit. And... I just don't know if I see a world where Clem is going to give him that many opportunities to really come back in this game.
But Fear Dragon, we do have to ask ourselves the other side of this coin. If Max Pax did drop a Robo and got a Robo Bay and got Disruptors or Colossus, one of these big, heavy, tech-heavy units that can swing a fight like that, he would he wouldn't have anything else. Like he would have he wouldn't have anything to defend yeah. them. I don't think he has the time to get that up or the money. So yeah, Charge Lot Phoenix, it can be powerful. You want to be playing it from ahead. But I don't know that he really had any other option. Oh no, I'm I'm with you. Like I think the decision was already made before the Hellion drop came in. Like the unit composition, the style that he was going for, that decision was made well in advance, but Ooh. It's unfortunate that he has to live now with the consequences of basically he went for this style and then he took all of that damage. So now it's like, okay, well, what do you do? Climb is not even falling prey to the stasis trap delays or anything. The hell, or sorry, the Phoenix are trying to buy time by going behind the army, find reinforcements or something. There's nothing to be found. Clem is leading with a single Marine so he can take out any additional stasis traps. That's caught by two of Marines on that one, but. I mean, he's just not falling prey to anything that Max Pax tries to do to delay this attack. But interestingly, Max, Max Pax is not going to get attacked right now. Clem literally goes halfway through the map and then just turns around and says, no, I think you're probably ready for this. Oh, he just wants more units. <laughs> he's waiting yeah. for the next round of reinforcements. Mm. And if, if Max Pax was dead previously, it's even worse now. <laughs> uh, plus one is going to be done in the next 20 seconds or so. But... He's gotten charged a lot of Phoenix and he's down 20 army supply. We, we've seen fights like this sometimes work, but it's a little bit desynced right now. A couple zealots are on the other side. That, I mean, those are nice force fields, but there is so much behind that. That just fire base of Clem that I, I don't know what Max Pax is supposed to do. Maybe maybe some really nice wood of mine. Dr something like that. You drag on top of the army, that makes something happen. Now the zealots coming in from multiple sides. Max Pax is a one ditch effort. Wood of mine shot on the Phoenix. And that is just, it's going to do it. Max Pax cannot find the value that he wants. The Phoenix, they're still here, kind of. But there's nothing on the ground. This third base is very, very dead. The zealots, they try to deal with reinforcements. The problem for Max Pax is simple. He can't fight the army that's here in his base right now. And Clem, off of literally dodging adept shots on Hellions with a medevac. Well, he takes game one. That's rough. That's really, really rough. And uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot Max Pax was realistically going to be able to do about it after taking all of those losses and everything. But I mean, you did a really good job of uh, pointing it out earlier. Just if the Phoenix is out there a little bit faster then. Those three Hellions are not one-shotting workers. If those three Hellions aren't one-shotting workers, or even just softening up some of the other workers, like there's one less Hellion attacking, then even afterwards, when we did see the Phoenix pop out and lift up units, like all those probes are a little bit healthier, so fewer workers overall go down. I still think he probably just takes a bit of damage there because he did have a bunch of units on the other side of the map, wasn't quite in position to deal with that. But man, that really does make a big difference on how quickly you have that first Phoenix out to try and help deal with that drop. Yeah, I mean, even if he had gone Oracle into Phoenix, he would have been fine. Very, very <laughs> simply there. That, that's actually a fairly decent response. But he went Oracle. He waited about 30 seconds, something like that. And then the Phoenix started getting made because he does scout the Hellions around the map. And if you go blink stalkers, you know, you're going to have a, it, it's not going to be easy, but you're going to have a couple of stalkers. You put them in the right spot. You can kill the Hellions. The style that the Max Packs went for uh, Oracle into blink is pretty, it's pretty good, mm -hmm. but not, not into this. And it's, uh, what? there's no way you're going to defend. It's a single adept. A single adept is not going to defend that. Yeah. It was always going to be tough, uh, but. You know, that unfortunately does put Max Pax down 0 and 1 already in this series. It's going to be a, a lot harder for him. He really does have no room for errors, especially against a player of the caliber of Clem. But Max Pax is Max Pax because he is quite good at playing with very, very few mistakes. So we head on to Ancient Cistern. I mean, interested to see what a normal looking game is going to look between look look like between these two players, because that last game, I feel like we were kind of robbed of of a proper game that we normally would get from these two. I mean, we did get to see Clem absolutely flash the micro there. So, <laughs> you know, that's one of the things we expect out of this series. But now you're right. Maybe we get something more. Ancient Sister is map two, and we're heading right on into it. And in the upper right, he is up one because again, I can't get over this. He dodged the Glaive Adept shot, or he dodged the Adept Glaives. It's Clem.
And down here in the bottom left hand side of the map, our red Protoss player from Cystorm Gaming, he is Max Pax. Aye, aye, aye. So, uh, we did have a proxy starport in that last game. This game, we got a low ground, the, the semi fake hidden barracks, but a second SCV heading over here. We got two <laughs> barracks this time. All right. This is two racks Reaper, but it's Maca two racks Reaper. He's never going to expect this. This is, uh, yeah, this is going to be very, very annoying. The kind of weird slight benefit, I guess, is that Max actually will come in. And if he doesn't even scout that location, he will just have to also account for the fact that there could also be like a proxy two racks or something out on the map. And that it maybe isn't going to be like two racks Reaper proxied literally on the low ground on the Terran side of the map. But I think it should still be like one of the things he has to account for, right? That there could just be a two racks on his side of the map. Maybe. I mean, I feel like we don't really, we'll see two racks Reaper. I don't really feel like in T in PVT, we see that much proxy two racks Reaper, but you're right. Max packs. He'll see that there is a gas. He sees that there's one gas and that is kind of the key scout. You know, it's not something crazier. But if, if I'm Max Pax right here, I'm kind of expecting this to just, you have one barracks on the map, Reaper's coming out of it. And the response mm -hmm. from one barracks versus two is kind of different from Max Pax's side of things. No, that's entirely fair. He's going to have to absolutely give the, the due amount of respect for this. He sees the commands that are popping on oh, out. No. He sees the Reaper pretty quickly. So he may just start thinking that there is a single Reaper that was just coming out of the barracks that was closely built to the uh, Terran side of the map. And a shield battery is coming out back at home, but that's one zealot. Oh, God, it's not even going to be able to buy time. It literally is just there to die. I mean, it is actually nice. Ooh, Stalker, one more shot gets the Reaper. Okay. That's actually really nice because that's also the scout, right? You see that there are three Reapers on the map. You know what has to be two wrecks. Three Reapers would not be out of one barracks by this time in the game. Huh. And seeing the Marines as well rallying in, Max Pax has gotten a lot. Oh, he's going to get him. Re nah, he doesn't have enough shots. Uh, Max Pax has gotten a lot of information here. But he does. There we go. Stalker pops out. This is going to be like maybe two dead probes. Depends on how good Max Pax is. A uh, micro is. And there's the second. Actually, maybe going to be a couple more here. Great target fire coming in from Clem. He gets three and one Reaper. It gets out. So Max Pax got a lot of vision. And actually, they're just Stalkers run by. And they're just going to kill a lot of stuff here. The Marines, they have infinite, mi infinite micro against them. SCVs trying to kill this Stalker, but it's not going to work out. And Max Pax, he, you know what? This is great. This is really good now coming in for the Danish Protoss. Uh, absolute chaos here on both sides where the Reaper is able to get a good amount of damage done, but the Stalker is also able to find a good amount of damage. And eventually, once the Marauders and everything start to pop on out, Max Max can absolutely oh. just recall out of here. And he's just going to have to be a bit careful about that first Marauder, but Marines come in from behind and oh, he didn't, he, he waited a little bit too long. He's going to end up losing both these Stalkers, I think, maybe. Yeah, he should, yeah the Reaper chases this down. Yeah. The Stalker can't fight that. So let's take stock of where we are after this maddening pell-mell four minutes at the end of it three scvs have gone down to four probes a couple reapers a couple marines zealots and stalkers it feels like clem has just edged himself a little bit of a lead here right it feels like mm -hmm. he's traded just a little bit better no I, i'm with you on that i oh. do think that he's gonna be a little bit happier even gets in it's actually not about necessarily any damage he's gonna get done because i don't know he's gonna get that much damage done with a single Hellion and one Reaper that got one shot off. It's up probe, which honestly is already more than I thought he was going to be able to get from that. But he gets a scout out on everything that Max Pax has behind this. He sees Twilight Council, sees the robo timing, and is going to have a good idea of what's potentially coming on out, including how many warp gates and stuff were also out. Although in fairness, this is Max Pax here. And if I'm Clem, I'm prepping for four gate blank regardless of what's happening because Max Pax, I swear he does it 80% of the time. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to stop it because this is Max Pax. He's very good at the build. But at least we know that's what's happening. And by the way, there is not a single tank on the map. There's the first one on the way right now. Stim is a decent ways off. He's going to have to hold with Marauder and Marine and, and Bunkers. And that's never a good position when you're, when you're the Terran here. Yeah, I mean, Clem is doing the right thing in positioning his units pretty close to the ramp. 
I wouldn't even mind if he had maybe, yeah, a few more units over in the main base, which I think he has done, because he has two bunkers, which is actually really smart. He can leave most of his units over in the main base, because the two bunkers are going to hold the line for a good bit of time, but... Oh, Max Pax, he leaves a couple of stalkers over the front lines to make it a bit harder to notice. And in the main base, more stalkers have been running on past everything. Stim has finished up, though, so Max has to be careful about the micro with this. But he can load up everything into the War Prism and just escape. The problem, though, is this is this is committed pressure, right? This is not two gate and you get a War Prism. Okay, fine. This is not three gate and you're going to commit a little bit more. This is four gateways early on. And this War Prism has to be very... Not actually enough Marines right now to kill it, but it still has to be pretty careful. Mm. I really thought we were going to see Max Pax, you know, he faint heavy pressure at the front. Force the bio, the Terran over for the most part onto the right side. Rotate Stalkers on the left. Join the Stalkers that have been dropped in and, and go from there. And then, okay, maybe you found this good position that you can get on top of the tank. That actually, yeah, that was, that was about where the tank was. And then you, you knock the tank down and then you're starting to develop this momentum. Instead, Max Pax gets five SCVs. That's something. I mean, he is up nine mm -hmm. workers now. But I don't... I, that, you could have done that with three packs just as easily. I, I don't really know that that was worth the, the, the early game commitment that Max Packs went for. Mm, yeah. I th He did get up the transition points really, really quickly. And I like that about his kind of play here. Because it's not just about the four gate blink. It's about the four gate blink. But with the DT follow up now. And the fact that the war oh, prism oh, continued to pull no around. Scans. There are no scans. Uh-oh. That's a troublesome state here for... Poor Clem. He's going to try and get up a missile turret, but he's going to lose so many SCVs in the process. There's one scan, so he can at least get up the missile turret in the natural. Does he have a missile turret being built in the main? He's, ah, he's on a move command right now with his army. Okay. Does deal with that. Doesn't lose too much of his army. I mean, still, th yes, this is only four SCVs right now. Clem is running across the map. Uh, but it's so much it's so much less mining time. <laughs> there is, it's, it's Clem is mining. On, he's 30 and out of 16. Yes, eventually these DTs will go down, but I don't know what Clem's idea is here. He's got, he's going to have one scan, it looks like, and for this push. Don't defensive DTs just kind of invalidate this? Yeah, I mean, he, he's kind of hoping for a little bit of a miracle here. He can't even really evacuate out appropriately because he's got one medevac with his army. That's that's it. A lot of his army supplies actually on the other side of the map. So I think at most he's looking to try and try, find some trades here, but again, how do you get out of here alive uh, with, uh, without stimming yourself to death, basically? And it looks like he is going to be able to find a way out and doesn't commit too heavily. I don't mind the idea of it if he's not committing too heavily. And somehow, some way, he does manage to avoid doing exactly that. Yeah, so it, it certainly, yes, he does get out. He doesn't take that much damage. But look, at, well, from the, from the DTs aggressively, but look at where Max Pax is right now. He's up 20. Mm -hmm. He's up like 16 workers. He's got his three bases. He's got a couple Colossus on the map. He really has so much map vision. Although the funny thing is, he actually, despite how much vision he has on the map, he doesn't see where the Terran army is, uh, which is a little bit awkward there. But the Zealots are going to find their way into the natural. And if Clem was not all in already, it's starting to become more and more all in. And this pylon is going to figure out just exactly where things are. So Max Pax, he's got two Colossus, third one about halfway done. And this mass widow mine army, I don't know how much it's really going to do again with these Colossus here that can just shell away from afar. Yeah, everything is kind of going wrong here for Clem. And you're absolutely right. The Widow Mines are going to have a very, very tough time getting a whole lot done to at least the Colossus and everything. Maybe they can help deal with some of the Zealots, but I do like the idea of a Doom Drop. I, I don't think that this is necessarily going to have an amazing chance, but does it have a better chance than trying to take a head-on fight? You, you bet your butt it does. And this is actually a little bit awkward here, right? So Pylon goes down, Templar Archives hits the deck, which means no Archons, no Storms, nothing like that coming out of Max Packs. But he led with the Zealots, so that actually is a, kind of hard to deal with. Max Pax on the army splits finds himself supply blocked. And it looks like we were going to see Clem trying to pair that with an attack on the left side. But two Colossus, a bunch of Zealots, shield battery overcharge. That was never going to work out for Clem super well. Yeah, very, very tough. Max Pax is just not letting his leads slip away. He's covering his bases. He's making sure that he has an appropriate number of units and Zealots or Colossus on every single angle. Templar Archives being rebuilt, so you'll be able to add on those Archons relatively shortly. And Clem just does not have the economy, really, to afford adding on a ton of Ghosts or anything like that. So he's just busy trying to flood out as many Vikings as he can, which is, frankly, not a lot right now. He's at one Viking adding on a second and third. But at the end of the day, Max Pax, I don't really know what stops him from just saying, 
I'm just gonna keep making units for maybe like another 25 or so supply, maybe like 30 supply, and then just go make sure that you can't take a third base and effectively that ends the game. Oh, so probes are gonna get pulled. What am I? Oh, Max, Max, pull your probes. Pull, there we go. Ooh, that was scary. And now the Winamines are going to get just get constantly retargeted here, but eventually a cannon is, is going to complete. So that's, you know, uh, there's a timer on this one. And I mean, I'm just being obnoxious. But there we go. Okay, Winamines go down. He gets the... Hey, actually, you know what? He gets out. So not bad. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least keeps the medevac alive and stuff, Ooh. which is uh, definitely nice. A lot of extra APM used on all of that, but... Here comes the attack, the, the you know, 30 supply later, Maxx says, I think that I actually have enough to just prevent you from taking a base and potentially end the game over here. And it's up to Clem to take some kind of miracle engagement, try and change his mind on that. But ah, this is not the start of that. No, it's really not. Stalkers get on top of Vikings immediately. And that was really the only solution to the fact that there are four Colossus on the map, Beer Dragon. Max, this is how Max Max has decided to end the game. Just, there is not going to be enough to deal with these Warwalkers. Yeah, there's a Widowmine drop into the fourth, but Max Max is dealing with that one. And there's nothing that Clem can do to deal with Max Max on the other side. And we get to go to game three. All right. That is very, very hype. It's a, I feel like this series has been a little bit weird just because it feels like both of these players, it's just like one of them gets ahead relatively early on. And then it's kind of like the closing out phase where the other, it's like both of these players are too good to just give up a lead. So they just maintain that lead as the other person like does really impressive plays to struggle and try and find a way back in the game, but they're just not given the window to. It's like, it's a very funny thing to watch. Yeah, and it's also kind of, we, we hyped this series up and I, game two was interesting. Game one was interesting for different reasons. But this is also something, one, one of those times, that one of those things that happens, right? Where both players are so good that they turn a tiny advantage and just immediately win the game with it or turn it into a big one. So this has probably been the least back and forth series, at least back and forth games we've had today. Because Clem found the value and he just dazzled us with that medevac mm -hmm. micro game one. And 15 probes, you know, Max Pax isn't coming back from that. Sometimes he has, but it's really hard. Game two, Max Pax, he has some really nice DT play and Clem drops a mule and that's kind of all she wrote. Max Pax closes the game out five minutes later. But that just means that we've had a very Clem heavy favored game. Very Max Pax favored game. Game three on Dragon Scales, it's got to be the good one, right? Uh, one can definitely hope. Well, we can definitely hope that this ends up being a kind of close back and forth game that we've been looking for where neither one of the players gets some massive advantage off of some early game harassment or something. Uh, and that both these players are able to put some pressure on each other and maybe find like some good back and forth trades and stuff, maybe head into like a later stage game. Even if it's not, I'd, I'd love to just see something where it's not one player gets like a big bit of damage that isn't supposed to normally happen done. Yeah, give me that 30 minute game. Make it so we run right into when NA is supposed to start. That's what we want. That's That's the goal. That's the dream. But for now... To get to 30 minutes, we have to get through the first five. And to get to the first five, we have to introduce our players. Map three is here. And in the bottom right, in the red, those invisible men cause too many problems. It's Clem. And over in the top left-hand side of the map, we have our red Protoss player. He is Max Pack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's a good point to bring up the invisible men because, yeah, it's easy to forget how Max Max got so far ahead. And it was off the back of him being in a kind of weird position where if he, those DTs had not gotten the big damage done, he had committed to the four gate blink and he hadn't really gotten a ton of damage done. It was the fact that he did a very fast transition from the four gate blink straight up into teching up for charge and getting up DTs and everything that really did allow him to do that additional la layer of pressure. But if that had not worked out, Max Max actually would have been behind that game. It, it really did come down to, did Clem have the scans and the detection ready or not? And he didn't. Yeah, it's... <sighs> I mean, that, that is always just a little bit awkward, but I almost wonder whether this is Max Pax playing into his own or into Clem's idea of who Max Pax is, right? Because we talked about this. Max Pax, he's going to go four gate nine games out of 10. Game one, though, he opened 
Phoenix, or he opened Oracle. It, it, the idea was Oracle into Blink. Obviously, it didn't quite work out like that. <laughs> Game two, he goes Forgate after kind of withstanding the early aggression from Clem. And then instead of committing to the Forgate, as I think everyone expected, and if I'm Clem, that's what I'm expecting here, immediate Dark Shrine. He does have that follow-up. So it does feel like a, a lot of this series has been Max Packs playing against the idea of how Max Packs plays. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess that does leave us with the interesting question of what does both Max Max and Clem do in game number three when it's kind of all down to the wire, all down to the final kind of match over here. See who's going to end up uh, taking an extra W here in round number two of the Swiss format. So far, we do see pretty normal looking openings for both sides. I mean, Clem decided to opt to try and grab that natural command center on the low ground, just playing it out safe and getting up the, the bunker and everything. And Max is just adding on that Twilight Council. He's adding on the Adepts. He's, both of these players are basically doing like the normal safe standard things. No proxies or anything else happening this game. Yeah, I think more importantly, they're both doing the things that typify themselves. I mean, Max Max again, Twilight. We expect to see a couple more gateways eventually. Clem, he's not going to go heavily, heavily aggressive. At least we, we, we don't really expect this. He might actually drop a medevac and do something interesting. But in general, these both these players, they make their oats. This is They've made their fame on their ability to play the mid game, on their ability to play the late game, even if they are very good uh, at that aggressive option. So for now, they're getting themselves there. Marines go out. Adepts find their way behind the mineral line. Max Pack shades forward. He's going to get the he, he's going to get the SCV. But he's also denying mining a little bit with the Hellions out here as well. It's a bit of an awkward fight. But Max Pack's actually doing fairly well. One Adept will go down. Doesn't get the last Marine. And hey, the game goes on. You trade an, S, you trade an Adept for a couple of Marines and an SCV. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair trade for kind of both sides. Where killing off one of the Adepts means that you really don't have to respect the second Adept nearly as much but definitely being able to kill a couple of marines in the scv is going to be nice it's all just fun little early game skirmishes and i think both these players quite good with their micro just have to be careful not to get too close to those marines and uh club is gonna have to back on off after taking some chip damage there but behind this we have two extra gateways being added on to the two that are already done so going up to four gateways we're getting a blink and it's going to be on Clem to try and sniff this out a little bit or, you know, even just suspect that it was going to be a likely option and make sure he gets up his defenses. And I will say I already do really like a lot of his building position to deal with things like Blink, just because having a lot of his add ons and his uh, big tech structures and stuff a little bit further away from the ramps makes it so that the stalkers really do have to commit pretty far in to go for those Blink uh, plays. Yeah, Fear Dragon, that's very true. The one thing I worry about with this is on the yes. Tech labs are defense are defensive. Your production's a little bit more defensive. Oh, Hellion drop find his way in. That's five probes. Blink is not yet done. This is, of course, handled a lot better than it was in game number one, but it's also a lot later and kind of, I'm not going to say it feels like an afterthought from Clem, but it doesn't feel like it was his primary idea in this game. Just like, hey, I'm going to build some Hellions. I'm going to build a medevac. Maybe I get some damage here. But the one mm -hmm. thing I worry about with this SimCity that you're talking about, yes, it, it guards the tech labs. That's fantastic but there's nothing for the tanks to hide behind. Often you'll see kind of a wall of of, uh, of structures just inside of the main base. And then the bio and the tanks can hide behind that. And it's really hard for the protoss to get on top of. In this instance, that's not gonna happen here. So the tanks, they're gonna have to sell a little bit further back. And that's a lot of stalkers for max packs. Yep. Well, with two tanks out, it does make it pretty difficult to just immediately jump in on top of both these units. So one tank is gonna go down. Second tank is gonna go close to down but it gets off one extra shot the rest of the bio force is going to try and focus down these stalkers remember this is a pretty committed bit of aggression for max pack so he has to get something done over there now that the tanks have been docked out it does mean this is the opportunity for him to try and find some damage does manage to find a couple of workers but at the same time raven on the other side of the map oh my god actually raven was over here on this side of the map i'm actually amazed he did not keep that back at home after sniffing out the uh, the four gate blink stalker aggression but well, we'll see if he's going to end up regretting not having the Raven here. I mean, Ravens don't really do a lot for you on the four gate. It, I, I do like his decision there. Just get economic damage to try to buffer some of what you're dealing with. But one bunker is going to go down. And Max Max, he's got two blinks. He's got the metaphor. He's got the war prism. And he's got the stalkers here blinking for their lives. Oh, the oh, bunker oh, is oh. getting so low. But oh, Clem's going to keep it alive here at the cost of some of his own SCVs. And now he doesn't have that war prism for blinks. No, he's still doing it. And he's warping in as well. Max Pax is trying so hard 
to bust through Clem here, but now we got two tanks. Stim, two thirds of the way done. That bunker survives with Maxpex. He's going to go in once again. SCV's not here anymore. This bunker is dead, and this is a much better position for Maxpex to push into now. Yep. Now he's going to be able to find his way into the mineral line. The Siege Shanks still trying to reposition. He tries to re-siege on top of the ramp over there, and that is going to make things a little bit more awkward for Maxpex, but Maxpex can rotate around to the left hand side. He is finding a lot of the damage that he has been looking for this whole time. Oh! Finding the siege tank that was on the ramp as the other siege tank re-sieges. That is really, really painful there for Clem. He's losing so many workers, so many bio units in the process here. And I feel like he's just kind of running a bit out of steam on the defense. Oh man, that was perfect timing too. That blinkin' was about five seconds before Stim completed. Imagine Max Pax does it then. You hit the Stim button, all those stalkers go down. Instead, Max Pax takes the victory. We talked about it.